Hello! Welcome to Dharma Makes and to this video where I'm going to show you how I made this little portal scene from a library. It is actually part of a set of bookends and in this part I'm going to show you how I made the library side and in part two how I made the Everglades side. Okay so I had these two cores from spent tape and they were screaming at me one thing portals so to make the base for these pieces I'm using some foam core uh, which is just some uh, extruded polystyrene between two sheets of paper it's re a really good building material so I'm making two identical pieces because as you have seen from the title of this video this project is in two parts and it has two matching portals so after I've decided on the main structure I move on to painting and for the base coat I'm just painting everything black in a couple of coats. Um, when that's dry, I'm using this creamy brown um, to paint on a layer. Not like a perfect layer, I do want a sort of color variation. And I have this uh, vinyl tape. I've had it for a very long time in my stash and I've never really got anything to use it for I thought that would make an excellent outside texture for the ring of the portal as if it was carved into stone um, just some sort of decoration and it was a bit wider so I'm just um, chopping off the little bits that were sticking out and then I'm painting on a layer of brown. Um, I did want to change the color, but also that vinyl really needed a layer of paint because it was super shiny. After that, I painted on a coat of black, um, kind of like to seep into the cracks. And as a final step for the portals themselves, I'm just smearing a generous amount of a gold paint on them. Okay, so for one side, I decided that one of the portals opens into a library. And to create the atmosphere for the library, I'm going to make this little reading nook um, scene. And for that, I need furniture. So I have this laser cut a piece of MDF for like miniature scale furniture. And I'm just cutting out the pieces for a round table and two shelves. Um, of course, I'm making sure to um, scrape and sand off any of those tabs that may have been left over. And then I'm assembling with some PVA glue. They're very well cut and they even press fit together, but adding the glue is going to make them permanent. So I'm just taking my time to precisely assemble the whole thing and not use too much glue. Um, that is one of my bad habits <laughs> is using too much glue because I'm always worried about things falling apart. But actually on things like this, it's better to be conservative with the amount. Otherwise it's going to seep out and just have those unseemly shiny blobs. So as I'm assembling these was actually quite fun. 
and after they completely dried I'm just using a nice warm brown paint to just paint all the furniture the same color and the MDF is really absorbent um, so the paint dries really fast on it but I only needed just one coat and the coverage was really great on these pieces for these little shelves I wanted to make a bunch of magical scrolls so I'm taking out um, some printed out pieces of paper um, that have miniature old magic looking printouts on them I'm distressing the edges and I'm also inking the paper to look a little bit old and I'm rolling them up in various ways um, to make scrolls I have these printouts from before as this is not my first adventure into <laughs> making tiny scrolls and books so I had a selection on hand and I'm just as I go I actually do um, glue on some of the pieces onto the shelves and I'm using different colors and textures and of course they get rolled up and glued down so you can't see much of the work but I think it's worth adding in all these details and finishing them really nicely because that way viewed from any angle it's still going to look um, really good you know realistic you're not gonna have like a raw edge of paper here or there it's all going to be cohesive and sell the reality of this world so I'm just going about the task of making I don't know a dozen of tiny scrolls um, these are actually quite at a small scale I think it's um, 20 millimeter standard um, tabletop gaming miniatures um, the furniture that is so everything I make needs to be really small but I do enjoy this process okay so besides the scrolls I'm actually also making tiny books so I'm using some leftover cardboard and foam core I'm just um, bulking out the piece of cardboard for the book cover with um, the piece of foam core and I actually make um, several of these I don't know many <laughs> I don't know how many I wasn't counting and I just kept using them up as soon as uh, they were ready I really wanted to add a little skull to one of the shelves and I have these skull beads but they it was too tall to actually fit in the shelf so I'm just using one of my dull blades to heat up with the lighter and uh, cutting through the bead um, don't worry I had all my windows open and it was just a very small amount of plastic fu fumes um, so I just cut it to size and sanded it a little bit and then jammed it real tight in there and I'm adding various bits and bobs and some of those tiny books and more of the scrolls and just arranging it in a way that looked interesting to me uh, I actually ended up putting a selection of objects on the top of the shelf as well a couple of scrolls a tiny tiny bottle and a bead that can just stand in for 
basically anything a tiny box or a vase or anything on this scale and I do the same for the second shelf I actually added these larger books kind of like big tomes and I used up the remaining tiny scrolls that I made before of course tweezers are uh, some of the best tools when working with something so tiny um, actually it seems like I've run out of uh, tiny scrolls and I had to make more which is not surprising it's amazing how many of these tiny things can fit onto a shelf And I am just having a hard time deciding what to put on the top of the shelf here. I didn't end up actually using that shiny orb. Instead, it's going to go on the table later. So there you can see just another tiny shelf filled with stuff. Okay, so on the table, I actually wanted to add... A book um, that's open with lots of pages so my favorite trick for this is to stick some printouts to where the book is open and then arrange the rest of the pages in a way that makes the book look voluminous <laughs> so I'm actually going about the business of sticking down each little page <laughs> one by one just with a tiny drop of PVA glue but this really helps with selling the illusion of a heavy book just opened to a page in the middle and uh, of course I inked the edges of the pages uh, first I'm also sticking some empty sheets of tiny paper um, to the desk um, and another scroll as if someone was studying here maybe and I think that's just like a tiny image as well and another book to prop up the open one with um, and yes I end up uh, sticking on the tiny orb um, from before and also kind of like a maybe a potion bottle or like an inkwell these tiny bottles are just made out of um, small beads now on to the base i actually wanted to have a nice wooden floor of course i could have printed out an, a sheet and stuck it on but i just really wanted that element of realism so I went to my stash of coffee stirrers and I actually cut them up in a pattern that resembles um, realistic wood floors. Cutting up all these coffee stirrers, measuring and trying to make a sort of interesting um, pattern. And as you can see, um, it's a little bit fiddly and time consuming and of course I had to sand all the edges after cutting because I didn't have the patience to slowly cut through everything so sometimes I was breaking them but it ended up looking fantastic in the end and I'm just uh, securing down these coffee stirrers with good old reliable <laughs> PVA glue um, now you may see um, that it doesn't look perfect, um, that there are things hanging off the edge, but I thought it would be best not to risk trying to cut to size exactly and then fall short. Instead, I'm just trimming the excess when the glue has fully dried, um, making it a lot easier myself 
it's actually quite satisfying to snap off those edges in the end. And of course more sanding um, to even out those edges. And I also sanded the top a little bit because um, the coffee stirrers themselves weren't all perfect or exactly the same width. And I'm using a watered down acrylic paint just to stain the wood. And this is actually a really satisfying process. I think it's beautiful how well the pine of the coffee stirrers takes the stain. And um, I just chose to add a little bit of orangish color variation to the floor with other acrylic paint. For the background wall, I really wanted to have this brick texture. This was made with texture paste through a stencil. But I had it lying around from a different project. So I'm just painting it red and then I added the dark wash and then I'm using my finger to rub on different yellows and oranges for the color variation you can find in brick. And in the end I'm going back with a little bit more red to brighten up some of the spots. So this piece wasn't actually wide enough for the background that I have. So instead I decided to split it, to work with it as if it was a design element intended like that. As you can see I've just cut it along the bricks and made it work and I'm also cutting out the excess that's gonna be inside of the portal and this actually gave me a few more bricks to work with um, and to fill in some of those uh, larger gaps so in the end it worked out really well and I'm just using a regular glue stick to attach this to the background um, glue stick works really well, uh, paper on paper is just very efficient, so why not use the easiest method? And I've made kind of like a thick mixture of um, kind of creamy, yellowish, orangish, bright um, acrylic paint to kind of mimic spackle or like filling that would be in between the bricks I don't know if this is any bit realistic but it felt like it would work to me so I just went ahead and used it so this is me arranging kind of um, all of the elements that are going to go on the floor and as you can see I'm creating this reading nook with some cushions on the floor to sit and some books all over the place and scrolls and um, those shelves. I know that um, the scale is not perfect but it kind of works. <laughs> At least it works in this context. This is um, at the end of the, of the day just a display piece and it's not like miniatures are going to be interacting with these at all. Uh, so yeah, I'm attaching things with a mixture of uh, PVA glue for the wood and paper bits and I'm using um, some hot glue for fabric and heavier items. But of course, um, I'm trying to hide the glue and not have any globs anywhere. Instead, have um, nice and neat um, ways to attach everything. And I just added um, little bits from my collection of miniatures. 
Okay, now for the portal. The portal from the library, I want it to lead to an outdoor area, to a sort of glade or evergreen forest or magical clearing, um, something like that. So I just printed out an image that I really liked that illustrated something similar to what I was imagining. And I'm returning my attention to the portal and I'm using these um, adhesive rhinestones to add to the edge of the portal, just making it look a little bit more magical and adding a very shiny a multifaceted rhinestone to the top as if that was the magic crystal that activates the portal or something and um, of course neatening up all the backs of the rhinestones just painting them to match the color of the portal itself just dulling down some of that um, red and also bringing back the gold that works really well to bring everything together and because this is the portal is kind of like looking into a very wooded area i thought maybe having a few bits of vegetation poking through would help uh, sell the illusion and of course on the other side of the portal I'm going to be using these same uh, plastic plants to bring it all together and I'm just um, carefully attaching um, little clusters of these sprigs around the edge of the portal and then finally attaching the portal itself with a generous amount of hot glue um, when that has set i am going to be using pva glue and this golden sand to make the portal look more magical shiny and sparkly actually <laughs> It was an afterthought that worked out really well. It was because the hot glue did seep out and I was looking not so pleasant. And this was a really, really good way to hide it and also lean into the magical nature of the portal. So, you know, happy accidents. <laughs> Just like Bob Ross says. Um, I wanted to attach some posters or um, I don't know, like a, a tiny map and things like that to the brick wall to where it was a little bit more bare. Just selling the library vibe <laughs> a little bit more. I'm just attaching them with glue. And um, after that golden sand has uh, dried, I just used another wash of um, diluted PVA glue to make sure that it's never going to shed. And I'm finally attaching um, the back wall to the base. And I'm also attaching the two little shelves um, in their proper place. Um, to finish the edges of this piece, I actually cut out some um, strips of sturdy paper, painted them a nice neutral brown, and I'm just going all around the edges, um, just neatening things up and unifying the materials that I used so it looks like one cohesive piece and it doesn't have anything that 
reveals what materials it has been built out of. As you can see, um, this portal has a twin, uh, the outdoor area, and this video is in two parts. So please do go and click on the link. You can find it at the end of the video. You can also find it in the description. These two pieces are meant to be bookends. And the idea is that the library portal opens into the Everglades and the Everglades portal opens into the library. So I invite you to go watch part two, the making of the Everglades side. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. I hope you have a nice day. Enjoy the pictures. Bye!